Media. Media. Why would a strategy be the selling point in your presentation? Hi, my name is Ronnie Cruz. After almost two decades as a career network marketer, I realized that despite continual work on my personal and professional development, that I had hit a massive brick wall. So I took a deep and honest look at myself, top to bottom, hoping to find answers. And my search led me to one conclusion. The definitions I held of my business, of my world, of my life, were the very things holding me back. If I wanted to change, if I wanted to grow beyond my current circumstances, I had to wipe the slate clean and redefine. This show is dedicated to helping you identify the belief systems, the mindsets, the very definitions that have held you back, and then help you break through those limitations to finally create the life you've been working so hard to achieve. Welcome to the Redefine Podcast. All right, welcome back to the show. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we're going to talk about network marketing presentations. What are we actually selling? Um, I did this topic in the Redefined community on Facebook. So if you want to go check it out, it's facebook.com slash groups slash Redefined community. And I've taken the replay and, I, and I've chopped it up for today's episode. So um, without further ado, here's the recording. New people to the community. You'll notice that I never hide um, what company I'm with, what products I'm promoting. Um, it's something that I feel very strongly about um, because, and this is the first point as far as presentations go. Um, I've, uh, yeah, I, I, I see this, I see, I've seen this and I, I still continue to see this uh, today, the practice of not necessarily being forward or upfront with the fact that we are number one in network marketing and number two, um, what we're selling, right? All right. So, um, it's the old bait and switch presentation, uh, where, you know, you you invite people to a presentation on products when really the focus is, and th- these are just examples, right? Now you, inv- you invite people to look, take a look at the products and really the focus of your presentation is the business opportunity. Um, and I'm going to talk about specific recruiting, sorry. I'm going to talk about recruiting, um, specifically in the next episode. That's, that's going to have its own, um, that's going to have its own, um, uh, standalone episode and that will actually wrap up the series. But today, um, we will just be talking about presentations, um, bait and switch, right? So that, uh, the other kind of bait and switch, which happened to me, um, uh, when I first got started in this profession was, uh, and I had no idea, I had no clue about network marketing. Um, I was invited to a business presentation, uh, and you know, I was told that, uh, you know, the typical network marketing language that, um, at the time, late nineties, uh, my friend had invited me and, and with, uh, well, yeah, yeah. Under, under the, and I wouldn't necessarily call it pretense on his part. Um, but I think it was what he was guided to do. Um, but he had invited me to a business presentation, um, stating that he has, he has a side business and his business partners were expanding and they were looking for more people to partner with. Um, when I got to the presentation, again, I had no idea, no preconceived notions about network marketing. I got to the presentation and I saw, you know, I fell in love with the concept of network marketing, um, from day one. I didn't know it was network marketing. Um, that's first thing. And number two, they actually actively told me it was not network marketing um, and that we were participating in e-commerce, right? E-commerce, the old bait and switch. Again, inviting, inviting under the pretense that it's something other than what it actually is, right? And then flipping the switch, right? Once they get to the invite, flipping the switch and then, oh, it's one of those things, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, a thing where they want to recruit you, um, so that they can build their downline, et cetera, et cetera. Sounds pretty crazy, but it still, it still does happen, right? Another, another example that I, I've just very recently seen today, as a matter of fact, uh, is, um, it's, it's very similar, very similar. Uh, the, the, there's an affiliate, um, marketer that I follow and they were, you know, I wanted to look at, uh, at their business model. I wanted to look at, um, you know, how, how they were creating, uh, 
ge- how they were generating customers and, and sales via their affiliate uh, marketing and their online uh, presence and their content creation, because that's what I thought it was, right? So I was, I've been following this individual on Instagram and, and, you know, the posts were all about, yeah. As a matter of fact, I remember specifically them saying that they, they were a network marketer, um, but they had left network marketing to do affiliate, high ticket affiliate sales. Um, and I get that, right? Like, so I was really intrigued, uh, by it, um, because, you know, the, the, marketplace i think is more open to looking at affiliate sales as opposed to network marketing um because we just have such a bad rap right uh, again that goes down to recruiting which i'll talk about in the next episode um so i was intrigued by this individual's uh content and you know what they were promoting and then of course you know showing the lifestyle that they had gained as a result of these you know creating a strong um high ticket affiliate business. Um, and the, the thing that really got me was like, they had like, this is, t- you know, easy marketing, um, marketing 101 is uh, like, okay, so I'll show you how I, how I did this. I'll show you how I'm creating my affiliate income and, and I have all this financial freedom. And, and so I signed up for it, right? Like I signed up and joined the group, um, and, and the email list and everything. And, and, uh, I saw their presentation. It was, uh, like the five or four pillars of affiliate marketing. Um, and so I was watching, I was watching this presentation today. It was like a masterclass, right? It titled it the masterclass of, uh, affiliate marketing masterclass. Um, and I was watching this, uh, this presentation today while I was on at the gym on the treadmill. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of, it was a lot of testimonials. It was like an hour and a half long, a lot of testimonials. They did give the pillars, um, and I got more and more curious uh, towards the end because as they went through, they started talking about a company that they had partnered with. Um, and then, you know, the language, I started to hear la- language that was very similar to network marketing. Uh, I started to hear language like, yeah, you know, I've been able to build my teams on autopilot, et cetera, et cetera, um, using these, these four pillars. And, and so by the end of it, um, they named the company and the company was, uh, uh, Enagic. Uh, the Kangen water filters. Um, and that's clearly network marketing. I mean, Enagic, I've, I've had a lot of familiar, familiarity with. I've been pitched, uh, <laughs> on Enagic and, and Kangen, um, many times over my career. Um, and yes, I mean, it can be a, an affiliate sales, um, high ticket affiliate sales, uh, deal. But in the masterclass that I watched, they were talking about, um, Network marketing, right? The, the network marketing side of, of, uh, of Enagic and, and Kangen. Again, I understand if they're, they're leveraging social media and, and really just focusing on customer sales, but, um, it, it's the bait and switch, right? Like you, you I, I came in looking f- to learn about affiliate marketing, but really it's, it's a network marketing deal. Um, I would have all, you know, been okay. Even if, uh, I would have even been okay if they had just talked about the products, right? If they, if, if, it, you know, if they were open up front, um, about what they were presenting about, about, you know, like the, the amazing water, um, and, and the health benefits, et cetera, et cetera, which, yeah, I, it's, it's questionable at best. Um, I, I would have known what I was getting into basically is, 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 the, is what I'm getting at, right? Um, this is, this is why people have a problem. <laughs> one of the, one of the many reasons people have a problem with network marketing, right? Um, it, it you know, not being upfront and, and, and transparent about what you're, you're offering people and what you're promoting and, 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 you know, what you're offering them. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, it's just, eh. I mean, I know it's marketing, but for me, it really, there's, there's, there's an integrity question there, right? Because if you're, if you're just getting people in to the presentation, um, and I know again, I know also that it's a numbers game, um, but to, to boost your numbers by not being upfront about what you're presenting to me is not how I, I would want to do business. And again, also contributes to the fact that people have a bad taste in their mouth about network marketing. Right. Like 
we got to be upfront. We got to be honest with what we're offering people. And it really, it really, it really kind of, um, I don't know. I think it, 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 uh, it has to go beyond your, your sales and, and, you know, the outcomes you're trying to create and, and, and really just be there of service and, and, and have ethics, have integrity behind, behind it. Uh, I think, um, speaking, uh, especially with online presentations or content creation, uh, you can create a brand and, and awareness around, your products without having to hide the fact that you're network marketing. I don't, like, like I said earlier, I, I don't hide the fact that I'm a network marketer. I don't even hide, um, the specific products and the specific company that, that, uh, that, uh, I'm affiliated with, which is a network marketing company. If we continue to, to, to operate this way as a profession, then we're never going to gain the trust of the general public and we're never going to grow beyond, um, yeah, beyond, beyond our numbers, right? Like, sure, you might be able to, you might be able to capture and, and get new people in who have never been in network marketing, but it's a revolving door, right? So, so as many people as you get in, there's at least that many number leaving, um, uh, because, uh, because it was, uh, they were not, um, honestly presented to, right? All right. So, so that's, that's definitely a, a big component, right? Uh, I, I encourage you uh, as you look at your presentations, um, please s- stop with the bait and switch, man. You know, that's not cool. Bait them in with this and then switch it, switch it when they're in the, in the door, right? Um, um, we can do better, uh, because I think we don't need to rely on that. I, 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 my career is, is proof of this. So for those of you who don't know me personally, um, I've been with, I've been a network marketer for almost 20 years, 18, 19, 20 around there. Um, and I've built a massive business. Uh, I'm, I've consistently been in the top 10, sometimes the top five, um, of my company for the last 10 years. And I've, I've never resorted to bait and switch type presentations. Uh, people, when I do a presentation, people know what they're getting into. And, and I've certainly, I've certainly, done my, my best to instill that in, uh, in my organization and in my team. Right. Um, obviously we're network marketers. You can practice your business any way you want, but, uh, I think, I think at the end of the day, people will appreciate you, whether they sign up with you or not, people will appreciate you, um, for being honest. Um, as opposed to trying to pull the wool over their heads just to get, get them to look at your presentation and pull the wool over their eyes. Their eyes, I think is the saying just to get, just to get them in a presentation, right? I personally don't appreciate that kind of practice. And so I, I don't, I don't practice and operate that way myself. Okay. So that's, that's the first aspect of presentations that I want to talk about. The second aspect is, okay, so what are we actually selling? <laughs> right. Um, when we get to the actual presentation and, and the mechanics of it, what, what, what have we historically, um, sold for me, because I came up in the profession at a time where compensation plans only pay commissions on distributors signups right we um unless you're you're directly retailing the product yourself to your friends and family um the the uh, the only way to make money in network marketing is to what was 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 to build your downline and and they end up your your downline and and your organization your, the distributor field ends up um being your and customer as well, right? So, so there was not really a distinction because of the comp- limitations of the compensation plans. There wasn't a distinction between customer and distributor. Um, because of that, I always focused on talking about the business, right? Like that was that was the main um, that was the main selling point, uh, as it were. So I led I led with the business, as as we say in the profession, right? Which what should I lead with? Lead with the business or or lead with the products? I always led with the business. Obviously things have changed. Compensation plans have evolved and adapted to the marketplace and, and allow for commissions to be paid out on customer acquisition and customer sales without, without ever having to recruit. Now, if you are with a company that doesn't have a customer component, um, in your compensation plan, uh, if you still, if the compensation plan still requires recruiting a downline, 
um, into your organization in order to, for you to make a, a single dollar, then that's something that you really have to consider um, uh, maybe approaching the corporate office about to adjust or looking at other other companies out there that are that are that do allow for customer sales um and well commissions on customer sales without recruiting um because they they are out there I, I i can't say how many but they are out there my company is one of those right we 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 adapted you know in the last couple of years to include a customer uh, a customer bonus so that people can start making money right away up front without having to recruit anybody into their organization. I mean, because honestly, what, like 98% of, of the field um, that, that come into network marketing will, I, I don't know, it's a pretty high number. 70% never recruit a single person. Um, another maybe 20, 15 to 20 will recruit one or two. Another five will recruit maybe up to four to six, and then the rest are, are your superstars. It's like 2%, right? That, that go on to recruit, um, 10 or more, right? Um, so like the, the reality is compensation plans have to account for that. And, and so I think companies are starting to get wise and, and, and that is a conversation you need to have, um, with, cor- with your corporate office and, uh, or with yourself and, and really, um, start looking at other options if, if there are those limitations. Um, the issue really then is that our narratives and our presentation, presentation strategies haven't changed, um, to account for that, right? Uh, we're, we're, there, because it's, it's led top down, right? Um, generally top down, the leaders uh, that, that are kind of dictating, um, the systems and, and how the field operates, uh, are teaching and operating under pretty antiquated practice and antiquated mindsets, right? Like old school leaders are still thinking, you know, recruit, lead with the business, sell, sell the dream. Um, show them how to make money by, by bringing in their friends and family, um, or whatever method. Um, but it is very, very much still, you know, selling, selling the, the business opportunity as, as a primary way to, to, um, to generate income because that's, that's, that's what we know, right? Again, I'm a dinosaur myself. Again, I've been in this profession almost 20 years. So, you know, it's, it's, it's like that old saying, you can't teach old dogs new tricks. The network marketing profession is really having a hard time letting go of this methodology of presenting the business opportunity um, as a way to generate income, right? Uh, well, okay, so presenting, leading with the business opportunity and then presenting the strategies that I talked about in episode two, which is really not really strategies. They're just hypotheticals, right? Uh, and and what, can, what you can achieve with the compensation plan. And then the bulk packages being the higher volume packages, this is what you can potentially earn um, pe- people, and I'm guilty of this. Uh, you know, I've, I've worked some beautiful presentations to show, okay, if you do, if you do this, this, and this, right? Like in my first, in my first company, it was all about get five and help them get five and help them get five, right? And you'll have this, this amount of income. Um, it, you know, in kind of in my middle career, <laughs> uh, the, the second, well, yeah, uh, around, around, you know, the mid to, to late 2000s. Um, uh, it, it was a two by two because I was in a binary, uh, binary company, right? Um, there were binary, the, the binary compensation plan started to uh, really, uh, come out uh, in, uh, around that time. Um, and you know, that was innovative. So we just adjusted our hypothetical numbers. Well, if you recruit two, um, into your organization this month and you help them next month, do the same and next month, do the same next month, do the same, you know, the, the, the doubling, right? Um, by the end of a year, you're going to have, I don't know, 10,000 people. I don't know. It's some, some stupid, right? Um, those were typically the things that, and of course, you know, the volume with that many people equals this, this amount of dollars is what you can potentially earn at the end of 12 months. If you, if you do this to me, a couple of things, if you, if you reference back to the strategy episode, it's not a strategy, right? When, when, when you present things, uh, when, when you have something like a layout of, okay, so if you get to this week, you get to this week, you plug in, you know, the bulk package volumes, um, you'll make X amount of money. It's not a strategy, right? That's, that's 
a hypothetical. <laughs> Again, it, it's a hypothetical of what the compensation plan, what you can get out of a, comp a compensation plan in the perfect case, perfect world scenario. Um, so that said, even if it was a strategy, why would you make, why would you use a strategy as a selling point in your presentation, right? Uh, uh, like this really occurred to me and, and, and I, you know, again, I, I laugh at it because I did it myself. Um, and I also realized that there were, lim it, it was largely because of the limitations of the compensation plans, but that's not the case anymore today, right? Why would a strategy uh, be the selling point <laughs> in your presentation, right? Uh, especially when it's coupled with a bait and switch and people didn't know they were coming into a network marketing presentation. Um, yeah, it just gets really, really icky. It really gets, it, it really gets, um, uh, uh, muddled and unclear for, for your prospects that are sitting there that are thinking, man, I, I thought I was just going to look at supplements or, you know, I thought I was just going to look at, uh, you know, cell phone service or whatever, whatever it might be. Right. But here I am, I'm getting pitched on a business opportunity, um, that, uh, that I was not interested in in the first place. Um, you see how, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but the logic of that, uh, like, you can see where this can all be very problematic, right? Uh, it, it, like, it, it's, it's, again, there are a lot of reasons why the general public has a bad taste in their mouth about network marketing. And, and what I've tried to do in, in this series is lay those out. And, and really point out, okay, this, this, and this, and we, we can adjust all of that very easily just by, just by opening up our minds to having different conversations and, and adjusting the network marketing narrative, um, to be more inclusive and, and, and to be more honest and open with that, with that conversation so that we're not, you know, like trying to pull wool over people's eyes, um, the other, the last aspect of, of the presentation that I think needs adjusted is, is how hard we sell it, right? Like it's like if somebody comes into, to a presentation thinking that they're going to look at products or, or, uh, or, um, you know, services that they, that they, they're, you know, they might be interested in, in for themselves. Um, and then, and then it's all hard selling the, the dream, right? Telling them that promising them that they can have financial future and fi uh, financial, um, independence and financial freedom if they bring into and help them bring into and help them bring into and this is the the money that you're going to residually uh, that will residually come in every every month um yeah i mean like i would i would turn i would tune out immediately right again if i came in there for for a product presentation or or a, or a service presentation and i'm getting hard sold a dream that i'm not even interested in uh and and you know this wacky hypothetical that, that you're telling me that's how, that's how easy it is to get there and, and really, really being pushed to purchase these large bulk package products. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, like it really kind of, for me, especially as, as capable and as, as good as, as some of the top network marketers have become at, at selling, right? Like selling, sell, sell sales is a skill, right? So, so, Many of us have gotten good at sales. Um, so even if somebody is, is not coming in to look at a business opportunity, um, you know, we have, especially the, those seasoned veterans have the ability to close, close people on things that they may not necessarily be interested in. They may not necessarily even want because we have, we have those, those, sell, uh, those, uh, sales skill sets. Um, what ends up happening is once they get in, they, like they get burned, right? Because again, 98% of, of, of the people that get into network marketing, um, can't do what the top two to 3% can do, right? What's the fix? Well, just be honest, <laughs> right? right? Just be honest. Um, like that's why I've always, I've, 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 I've always been kind of at odds with, teaching sales tactic and, and leaders in, in network marketing that teach sales tactic, um, because it, it can be, it can be misused, um, um, unknowingly. I mean, I, I know, you know, I, we all have our goals to achieve and, and the things that we want to do in, in our businesses and, and in our, you know, in our lives. Um, but, um, by 
not having these conversations, um, we, we, we potentially, well, yeah, network marketing, uh, the field potentially can, can misuse the things that we, we teach them or the things that we show them, um, to, to gain, well, yeah, for their own best advantage, right? Um, for their own, for their own gain. Um, because I mean, that's, that's, there's no, there's no necessarily rules on how to do business, right? Um, other than the, you know, policies and procedures and, and staying compliant with regulators, um, uh, the, the scruples of closing people, hard closing people and, and hard selling people on, on the opportunity and on the business and, and then on, on these big packages. Um, it's, yeah, there's, there's, there's nothing regulating that at all. Right. Um, again, that's why 98% of the, the, the people that get into network marketing, um, as a business get burned. Right. Uh, John David Mann, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with him, he's a network marketing network marketer from, I don't know, 20 plus years ago. Um, but he, he early in my career, he was one of the people that I really looked up to, um, because he had a great perspective on network marketing, even back then when compensation plans were very limited to just recruiting. Um, and he wrote, he, he, he's wrote a series of essays over the years, articles and stuff on network marketing, all brilliant stuff. Um, and he compiled it in a book. This book must be 20 years old, but he compiled it in a book called the Zen of MLM. And in one of those, um, in, in one of those, uh, essays, uh, he talks about what he calls the golden rule or no, the Hippocratic, the Hippocratic oath of network marketing, um, is to first do no harm. Right. And, and, you know, I had no organization. I had really barely a business to speak of at that time at the time, but I, 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 that principle really resonated with me because, um, I, I had already, uh, even early on in my career, I had already seen how it how network marketers had abused um, the the freedoms that we have in this business in terms of how to how to practice it, right? Um, of course, there's always going to be there's always going to be a percentage of of network marketers or people that get into network marketer network marketing that will not have the scruples and that will just be like, I got to make sales, I got to make that cash, right? Um, but for the most part, I think, I think all of you can agree with me with this, um, with this Hippocratic oath that, that uh, John David Matt talked about in his book. And it was really when you do a presentation, when you talk to anybody, um, when you talk to a prospect about your business or when you have a conversation, make sure that they leave with a better impression of you and of net, well, of network marketing, network marketing and your business and then of you. Than, than they had coming into the conversation, right? Right. It's, it's the whole principle of leave a place better than, uh, than, than it was when, when you first got here, right? Uh, I, I definitely want to leave network marketing a better profession than when I first got started. I mean, I'm not leaving anytime soon, <laughs> but you know, like I, I operate under, under those, under that principle because I think I like, yeah, that's, that's how I want to do business. That I think, um, increases the speed of business because you develop, um, well, because if you do business with, with, with compassion and understanding and, and with integrity and ethics, um, people will be much more apt to trust you. And we all know about the speed of trust. Right. Trust is trust is is what makes business um, business move and, and accelerate really fast. Um, otherwise, you're just relying on on numbers and 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 churn. Right. Um, developing trust, I know, seems like a slower play and and a, and a longer play. But I'm, I'm telling you, if you put in the time to do business with with integrity and to be upfront and to be honest with about uh, about what you're presenting. Um, then eventually that momentum really kicks in, right? Like, like you build, you build, you build, you build, you build trust, you build rapport. Um, you leave, you leave the, the, your prospects leave, um, feeling better about network marketing, um, uh, feeling better about your company, feeling better about you, whether they sign up or not. Um, and, and, uh, that just kind of compounds on itself and, and business starts to take off. Uh, 
it's, it's pretty, pretty much what happened with me, right? Like I, I, it took me cumulatively six and a half, almost seven years to start gaining traction in my, in my profession, in my network marketing business. But once, once that, that momentum kicked in, man, it, it was hockey stick. Like we talk about momentum. I, uh, I, I shot up from, um, you know, from, uh, yeah, well, I started, okay, 2013, I started the year, well, 2012, at the end of 2012, my last check was like $30 something, 32 bucks, you know, 60, 60, 60 something bucks the, the week before that. By August, so that was 2012, by August, um, 2013, I was in the top five of the company, <laughs> right? Now it didn't happen in those, in those eight months. It, it happened as a result of building, um, with these principles, uh, over, over the previous six and a half, seven years. It's just that the, the, the momentum caught up and it compounded and my business went absolutely nuts, right? Of course, there's other things like consistency. I was always consistent with building my business despite feeling like I wasn't making any headway. Um, and, you know, a lot of other things in that organization, uh, in that, in that, uh, uh, in my, in my, uh, history, in my journey as a network marketer. But, um, one of the, the key components is being uh, just doing things with integrity and not hard selling people on, uh, well, yeah, being honest and upfront, being, being transparent and not hard selling people in, into things that they're, they're not ready to do or even want. Right. So, so the, the adjustment would be, yeah, just present. Uh, and of course, again, this applies to companies that have, um, customer sales baked into their compensation plans. Um, just present the, the, the products and services. Right. Or, or services that, that your company has to offer. And that, that also makes the conversations easier as well. Right. Uh, um, you know, when you're inviting people, right? Like when you have conversations with people, then it's easy to see if what, what needs they might have in their lives, what problems that they're, they might be looking to solve. And, and you'd be like, yeah, I, I got a product for that. Or, you know, I have a service for that. Um, there's, it's much less pressure than to try to talk and, and open a conversation about our, you know, creating income on the side, right? And then you're manufacturing a conversation. And I know, again, that's how we were taught, um, you know, 20 years ago, but that's no longer the case, right? If, if we do things right, then we can sell products and, and services all day long. And there, there will be those two to 3% that, that come in for the product presentation and, and be curious, well, you're, you're making pretty good money at this, right, Ronnie? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling in a good income. Can you tell me more about that? Right? Like the, 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 it's, it's a more natural kind of, um, sifting process as opposed to just running the numbers and, and churning through people, right? Let people self-select themselves. <laughs> Austin Powers moment there. Let people self-select themselves into, into, you know, letting you know whether, whether they're curious about the business or not. All right. As opposed to baiting and switching and forcing people to listen to something, um, or, or even hard selling them something that they don't, they don't, weren't looking for in the first place. All right. Selling, making the products or your services, the selling point, the main selling point in your, um, presentation makes this process so much smoother and, and so much natural, so much less pressure and, it can be done with so much more ethics and integrity. All right. Well, that is going to do it for today's episode on network marketing presentations. Hopefully that helped. Hopefully it made sense. Um, if you have any you know, thoughts, ideas, if you want to get in on the discussion, of course, uh, please feel free to join us on, in, excuse me, in the Redefined community on Facebook. Again, it's facebook.com slash group slash Redefine community. I'll leave the link in the show notes of this episode. Uh, of course, you can connect with me on any of the socials, Instagram. I am at the Ronnie Cruz, Facebook, Ronnie Cruz 11. Those are our two main ones. Um, and then uh, beyond that, well, yeah, we'll catch us in, catch us in the next episode where I'm going to finally be closing out this series uh, on network marketing. We're going to be talking about recruiting. We're going to be talking about recruiting. And it'll be actually the last episode of 2023. 
so yeah yeah it just worked out that way <laughs> but um yeah tune in that, that that episode's coming in a few days so until then be well be safe we'll see you in the next episode